G'day everyone, it's Mark Fernandez here and welcome to another video. Uh, today we'll be looking at my D22 Nissan Navara, an in-depth walkthrough and having a look and seeing it, can you get a really good overlanding touring vehicle uh, for a, a good price and uh, is it possible to do it on a budget? So that's what we'll be looking at today. If you're new to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button and uh, click the notifications so you can stay up to date. Uh, let's get straight into the video. So starting at the front of the car is an Iron Man bull bar. Um, it does not have the extra cutout for the headlights. This one does not have that. But what it does have is the winch uh, compatible area there. So we can put a winch in there, which I do plan on doing. What it also has is a radiator protector there. Let's see if you can see that there. Um, and so that protects a little bit underneath here, but it doesn't extend too far underneath there. So it does provide a little bit of protection, um, but that's about as far as that goes. Uh, on the front, uh, we installed the last video, some, um, some XTM nine inch LED driving lights. So just moving to the side here of the Iron Man bull bar, these are LED daytime running lights next to the turn signal indicators. Uh, these lights aren't very bright. They're more designed for just safety more than anything. Uh, but yeah, they kind of cool out a nice little look to the to the ute when it's uh, all up and running and uh, and all the lights are on. So it's a quite, quite a nice little look there. You'll see in the front, we've got this high top sort of um, protection here with the loops. Um, I think that that's a very good idea considering where we live in Australia, where there are lots of kangaroos and especially where I live as well there are plenty of them. Uh, also got a mount up here for UHF antenna um, so that may be something I'll do in the future I'm not too sure if I need that yet but that's something that I'll have to decide later on definitely a little weekend project possibly there. Moving on to the tyre setup what we've got are Toyo Open Countries now these ones are a uh, 26570 R16 on a obviously 16 inch wheel. Now I'm not too sure if I want to change these to a steel wheel. I do get a little bit of rubbing at full lock, so that's not going to be ideal when we are going a little bit off road. So I might um, I might change that to a steel wheel. Um, the black sun razors are pretty cool, so I might do that in the future. Now in terms of paint, uh, it's a green. I don't know the exact name of the color. What it's called. But it is a metallic green. Um, it might be a little bit hard to see, but I'll try and get it to zoom in so you can see the fleck in the um, in the paint. But um, it is a it is a metallic color. Uh, it is quite nice when it's out in the sun. Um, you can kind of see that there. Um, it's quite nice when it's out in the sun. Pretty surprised that um, that they made this color because it's actually a really nice color for what is essentially a basic ute. Um, that kind of leads me on to my next point of the paint and the condition of the paint. Now, this is something that we'll be addressing very shortly. Um, and you'll start to see now the clear coat hasn't fully faded here yet. Um, it's kind of just on the edge there, just starting to fade there. Um, but what we can see, and it's quite annoying because I can see this from the, see this from the driving uh, seat, is this clear coat here is quite damaged. Um, so that's going to be a job very shortly for me to do um, and then also up here on the roof you'll see there's quite that's probably the worst of it actually up there and then around on the passenger side it's quite bad on the on the doors there so there there and then up the top here as well so i don't know if i will be able to repair that just yet just with some clear coat some sanding but we're going to find out it's all part of project. With the bigger wheels, I do get a little bit worse fuel economy than other people that own this car. I do have um, a mate who has a D22 as well, and he has smaller wheels on it and he gets about another litre or two litres better per 100 kilometres. Um, the fuel tank that is in here has been swapped out. Um, I don't know what they come with standard. I think it might be 75. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but it is, uh, in this one, it's an ARB 125 litre fuel tank. And um, I get pretty good range out of it. Mostly uh, I get to about 1100 kilometers before I have to um, fill up again. Moving to the top of the vehicle, we've got three rhino racks, one 
two, and then a third one. Now that third one is actually a load bearing. Um, if we have a look inside here, you'll see that it is linked down the bottom there to the tray. So I can actually put quite a fair bit of weight on there and that bar runs up to the top there, just like that, okay? Um, while we're in the tray, might as well have a quick conversation in here. So we've got, um, I believe this is the stock, the stock um, protector here. Uh, it doesn't feel like that it is bare metal because it does have a little bit of a protectant on it, but not much. Um, it's enough, but it does scratch uh, when there is metal on uh, metal here. So just something that I've noticed that um, might have to put a little bit more of serious protection on that. Um, you'll notice that we're in a canopy, so obviously this does have a canopy, which I'm very happy about. Excellent for uh, long trips and keeping everything out of the dirt and the rain. Uh, on this side here, we've got a window. Now, this window has got a lock, okay, and it is a sliding window. So it looks a lot like that. Okay. Um, on this side here, this side is probably side because it's got the gas struts and um and the locks look a little bit like this so that one like that that one like that and you pull it and then we've got access to all of it. This window is really handy because even when we are doing say the gardening and we're taking uh, some of the branch branches and branch trimmings to the dump it makes it quite uh, helpful to get in the hose in here and, uh, and kind of get rid of all the dirt that's left over and also to kind of stack it from this side is quite good. So it's super handy being able to access things from this side. Um, you'll see that there are holes in the tray here um, and some markings because the guy before me uh, obviously had a set of drawers in here um, and further to that as well. See if I can zoom in there, excuse the, the brush there, this is quite helpful. Uh, the there was a, there's an Anderson plug in there as well that's kind of a little bit beat up but um, yeah I think the guy had a um, guy had a fridge in there before there are some tie down points you'll see there's one tie down point there there's another one there and then uh, symmetrical on the other side as well so there should be four tie down points um, and this window also too can be taken out I haven't had a go at it yet but obviously with the um, with the with the equipment that's on there, you can take that off. I'm not quite sure why, maybe for a little bit of airflow or something when you set up camp. But um, there is a light in here. It doesn't open up, uh, it doesn't turn on when you open up the, the doors or anything. So that kind of sums up everything about the tray. There wasn't too much to talk about in here, but I do like the features of being able to lock this up because that is quite helpful. And it came with keys to lock up everything, including this back here. So that is quite useful. I can lock all that up there as well. So uh, while we're in the back here, let's have a look at the uh, towing. It does have a uh, towing pack on it. Um, everything that you need to do towing, I guess. I don't really know too much about towing, but uh, yeah, it's um, it looks like it'll it'll work fine. The guy's obviously done quite a fair bit of towing with it because it looks like it's been used quite a bit. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Uh, it does also have a reverse. I'll show you guys that when we are in the cabin. Now, while we're in the back here, uh, standard exhaust is there. Um, nothing too much to say about that. And also too, we've got, I believe this is an aftermarket diff cover. Um, I have seen similar ones uh, at ARB, but I can't say for certain. But something that I do know is that it does have some uh, upgraded shocks and leaf springs so it has been upgraded to a 200 kilogram constant weight so when i have an empty tank it is uh pretty um harsh uh but when i've got a full tank and uh, i put a bit of gear in there it um it actually smooths out the ride very nicely so um i guess that's kind of a problem that everyone has do you run softer springs and leaves um and you know not have the carrying capacity or do you um, you know, have the carrying capacity of the of the upgraded leaves and shocks, and um, and when you're unladen, have the uh, have the poor ride. So that's kind of the the trade 
trade up there. But uh, for me, I'm pretty happy with how it is at the moment. I don't really want to spend any extra money on it than I have to. Um, so for now, that's good. And I'm not going to undo what this guy before me uh, that owned it has already done. So I'm just going to leave that one as it is for now. And um, then if I feel it's just getting a little bit too much, um, I might um, I might change that to a to a just back to stock, um, just maybe with a little bit better quality and bit, bit newer uh, suspension. Um, we should probably have a look at the engine as well while we're here. Um, we will talk about the uh, about the the snorkel as well. Um, might do that now before I open up the on it. So it's a Safari snorkel. Um, it is a it's. I find it's pretty good uh, so far, um, better than the stock ones because they aren't sealed and they let in water. So it's good to know that if um, we do come into uh, any any difficult situations where the water will be deep, not going to flood the engine. So that's kind of a good thing to know. And that's kind of the top of it up there. So that's, um, that's really all there is to, to talk about with that one. Um, also too, it does have a bug or stone deflector on the front there, which I have never had on a car before. So that's kind of new and exciting. So um, yeah, that kind of covers most of the exterior. Um, in terms of the side of the bar work, it's got just the standard um, side steps. Now I do struggle with the uh, with trying to get up on these to uh, clean the very top of the roof because there isn't a lot of room uh, to put your foot. So you'll see if I look down from here, I do struggle to put my foot on there because it is uh, quite narrow. So that's something that I'll um, hopefully be able to fix at some point. So maybe get um, get some roof bars coming outside here and then linking up to a wider uh, side step would be nice. Okay. And something else that I do like about the outside here is the, the fender flares. And they stick out quite a lot. And I think it's a pretty cool aggressive look and it gives me quite a lot of room there to be able to put a wider wheel um, or a lower offset wheel. So yes, yeah, so that will be that'll be quite nice to give it a bit more of an aggressive look. So it will be legal and it will stay inside the fender flares. So uh, next we'll be having a look at the engine. So uh, we will come back to the interior. But now I'm just going to have a look at the engine. Now the engine is a YD. 25. Let's see if we can do this with one hand. Engine is a YD25 um, engine, which is a diesel, um, turbo diesel, and it um, yeah, and it's and it goes okay. <clears throat> the torque on it is is good when you're rolling, but a lot of people struggle with having the um, the the lack of torque to begin with early in the in the gears. Which is why when you buy these cars, you need to watch out to see if um, if the clutch needs to be replaced because people ride the clutch when they take off because they get impatient and they want the, the power sooner rather than later. So that is something to consider if you are interested in buying one of these is to check out to see if the, if the clutch is slipping or not. Um, but this one has been good. I think the guy that had before me babied it really, really well. So yeah, so I'm quite lucky in that regards. Um, but yeah, so you just got to be a little bit patient to start off with um, early in the gear when you take off. Apart from that, it's uh, it's quite talky. I find on roll-ons, so like if I'm coming to a traffic light and I can kind of roll on a little bit, I'm not fully stopped um, and I can be in second gear, uh, it'll take off really well. So that, that torque is is um, is quite good. I'm very surprised for 2.5 litre. I didn't expect it actually to have the amount of torque that it does, got to be careful in the wet. Uh, so I'm just going to finish putting this bonnet up because I've been holding it here and uh, we're going to talk about the modification plate that it's got on it. It has got a modification plate by ARB um, and one is for the bull bar. So that one there is for the bull bar. And the second one down here is for the, um, is for a child restraint in the back. So that's, um, that's good to like, the, the guy that had this car before me obviously wanted everything to be legal and done properly. Um, and considering the um, the modification plates with the bull bar, um, I think you have to have the upgraded suspension. So he wanted it to be 
um, to be legal. You want it to be able to take it interstate and not have any problems at all, uh, which is why I've kind of kept the theme going with uh, not too much uh, backyard mechanics. Um, and uh, and yeah, with the light bars, I've heard that if you just have one light bar down south, uh, you'll get pulled over because the law is and it's changing all the time that you need to have uh, a pair of lights. So that's something that um, I took into consideration. So I think that pretty much summarizes what's going on in the engine bay. Um, I intend on keeping this pre-stock. I don't really want to do too much to the engine and the performance. I want to try and keep it as simple as possible and, um, and as legal as possible as well. So um, I was tempted to do the EGR blanking plate, which means that I'll be able to get um, a little bit more power and uh, less smoke will be coming out of the back of the exhaust. Um, but, you know, um, in terms of legality and the reason why it was, um, it was built the way it was, um, I don't really want to be messing around with that. So that's something that will stay the same. It's tempting, but again, um, you know, the guy before me put in a lot of work to make sure that this is completely legal, just in case, you know, there are any issues um, and get pulled over and the police go through everything. We want everything to be as uh, legitimate and as legal as possible. So um, that's just something that I'm considering throughout this build is making sure that everything looks as clean, as tidy and as legal as possible. Now let's go ahead and have a look at the um, at the interior. Uh, not a whole lot to see in here. Um, it's again, pretty standard. One thing that I will show you guys that's kind of funny is that the electrics in this car, uh, the D22 is really simple. Um, the D40s have quite a history of issues with the, um, with the, with electrical issues. Um, so it sounds like that the more complicated Nissan made it, the uh, the worse it was. So um, all that they've got in this car, really, in terms of electrics, is that interior light only goes on and off with the driver's door. So if I go ahead now and open up the passenger door, it does not open. Same with all the other doors. So just this door opens up the light, which is kind of funny. Um, just going to show you how basic and kind of rugged this thing is. Uh, they just went with all the basics of everything, which is kind of the charm of this car. Um, inside we have got uh, it's a five-speed manual. Uh, we have also got a uh, trailer. We've got a trailer brake booster there, a brake controller. Um, I haven't installed any of this myself. This came with the car. Um, you would have noticed that we, in our first build video, we gave this a good clean out. So that was nice and clean. Um, and all the dials and all the switches are all very mechanical and they're all very basic. So that's again, part of the reason why I really like this car is that it's just so basic and, um, and everything on it's just, just feels like it's not going to break. So that's kind of part of the reason why I like it. It does have, dash mat it does have rubber floor mats that don't really fit it particularly well um so i wouldn't mind getting some nice um sand grabber ones there they're quite nice so i wouldn't mind doing that too but basically on the inside super basic um it's got everything that you need um and all things that you know you may not need aren't even bothered to be included they didn't even think about it it's as basic as possible one thing that it does have is an entertainment unit and um, and it links up to my phone, which is pretty cool, so I can play music. And it does have an aftermarket audio system on it. Uh, the bass is a little bit more punchy, um, but I'll probably swap them out because they doesn't sound as good as I think it could be. So I'll be looking at that at some point too. Um, in terms of any modifications on the interior, nothing yet. I do have a few plans for it. In terms of a center console fridge, that's definitely on the list of things to do. Um, that's probably one of my next projects um, in terms of big, big projects and big purchases. That's right up there. Um, it is a manual. I probably didn't mention that before, but manual, it's got the dual range there. Um, and yeah, that's kind of as much as, as we take it. It does have aircon, which is nice. And that's kind of um, the basics. So guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, I don't really have much else to show you. I don't have any like intricate systems on the car yet. I don't have any, um, you know, 
and any major accessories or anything like that but you know i do have the the driving lights that i installed uh, i think it was the last video and uh, yeah so if you want to go ahead and check that out that'll be cool but i just hope it gives you a little bit of a, an idea of you don't need to spend too much money on a vehicle uh, and to be able to get out and do things and be able to explore you can obviously spend a lot less on a, on, a, on a car um, and, and you know you you can do a lot more with a lot less as well but you know I'm just happy with what I got and and it's really good starting point for me and I'm not waiting until I get all these accessories and all this stuff done um, I'm just going to kind of you know get out there explore as much as I can what I got and build it up as I need it so um, from a lot of the advice that I've been given um, that's kind of what I'm doing um, not letting the accessories and fridges whatever batteries determine where i'm going i'm just going to go ahead and uh and check out as much as i can with uh with the vehicle that i've got and you know if there's anything that i need i'll add it to it but for now i kind of talked a little bit about some of the um some of the the things i want to add to the car so you know obviously fixing up a few things as well like the the clear coat the paint that's something that i would like to do as well so um for me it's a really good starting point for me to video this and say this is what i've got because i wish that i did that in my uh, for my previous car because it started off pretty rough and like pretty basic and then by the time i was finished with it it, it, it looked pretty good and I, and I really liked it so it's a bit sad to get rid of that car but um you know i've got this one now and i'm really happy with it so i'm going to um do this one up as well and uh and it's good so yeah I'll be able to see kind of the progression and i'll be able to look back at this video and be like oh that's cool that's like what it looked like and um that's what it looked like now so yeah that's kind of what i'm looking forward to in the future so um yeah i hope you guys are well out there and you're staying healthy um and i'll see you guys in the next one